The 1998 Montour Spartans, under the direction of second-year head coach Don Morgan, opened the campaign with a tough assignment, a matchup with the defending AAA champion West Allegheny Indians. And under the new AAA three-conference, nine-team format, the Spartans, unlike in previous seasons, jumped right into the meat of their conference schedule. Montour spotted the Indians an early 7-0 first quarter lead, but the defense stiffened. On this interception coming up by linebacker Brandon Bertram, big play, killing another West Allegheny drive just before halftime, and it was clear this would become a defensive struggle. The punters got a good workout in the opener for 1998. A 17-yard punt return by number seven, Alan Reichel right here, set up Montour just shy of midfield. They were operating in business here after the nice return by Reichel as he goes to the outside. But Montour could not convert the drive. Steve Romano had a nice 16-yard run here, but they had to punt the ball back to the Indians. And that's when the defense came up big again. Pressure from defensive end Mark Williams. Tyler Palco's pass is picked off by junior free safety Todd Police. And this is returned deep into Indian territory at the 17-yard line. Montour knocking on the door. Following quarterback Brian DeCenzo's eight-yard run for a first down, the newest addition to the 98 Spartans quickly made his presence felt. Terrence Thomas, the senior transfer from Georgia, just breaks the plane of the goal line for the Spartans' first touchdown of the season and his first in a Montour uniform. The Spartans unable to convert the extra point, however, with 11-17 left in the game, Montour trailed 7-6. And the two Parkway Conference heavyweights traded blows the remainder of the game. But neither team scored again. Montour falls to West Allegheny by a single point, and the disappointment is written all over the faces of these young Spartans. The following Friday, the Spartans made the short trip down Route 79 for a battle with the Chartiers Valley Colts, who rejoined the Parkway Conference after a four-year absence. The Colts were rudely welcomed back by a strong Spartan defense here and a sack by Mark Williams and junior Justin Bianco on the opening series. More nice defense. Just as in the West Allegheny game, Montour allowed CB to take a 7-0 advantage before a big kickoff return. Terrence Thomas, the man who got his first touchdown last week, set up the Spartans at the 41-yard line with some nice running. Look at the moves. Montour in business. Then it's Steve Romano on a 14-yard gallop up the middle, and it moved the ball to the Colts' 28-yard line. Fourth down, now a big play coming up to senior wide receiver Gino Federico. The pass is incomplete, but pass interference keeps the Montour drive alive. With five seconds remaining in the half, sophomore quarterback Brian DeCenzo scores his first touchdown as a Spartan. Montour in business. They go for two and fail. Montour trails 7 to 6 at halftime. Early third quarter, though, the Spartan offense came to life. Senior tailback Steve Romano, look at him go. He shows you why he's the leading rusher for the Spartans last year. He breaks one 67 yards for the touchdown and the lead. They go for two. DeCenzo's pass to tight end Derek Barron is good. Two-point conversion is up on the board, and the Spartans had the lead at 14-7. That lead remained at seven points because of some strong Montour defense once again. We've seen it in the opening week, and we see it again this week. Goal line stand. The Colts are denied. They try to get in, but can't. Later, however, Spartans fumble in the end zone. CV pounces on it for a touchdown to make it a 14-14 game. That's when Montour had an answer. A 60-yard eight play Montour drive sparked by a fine 17-yard run by who else? Romano culminated Ryan DeCenzo's second touchdown of the game, and the Spartans went up 20-14 on the touchdown. A last-ditch effort by Shar Valley, broken up on this play by defensive backs Alan Reichel and Todd Police, and Montour held on to their first win of the season 
This night belonged the senior tailback Steve Romano, who rushed for 158 yards on 23 carries. Final score, Montour 20, CV 14. Number three, the Spartans returned home to face another AAA playoff semifinalist from 1997, the Wolverines of Elwood City. For the first time this season, Montour jumped out to the early lead. 
Opening drive, Steve Romano breaks off left tackle behind beautiful blocks by Justin Traurig, Derek Barron, and Brandon Bertram. See you later. 64-yard touchdown run. Montour up for the first time in a game. Ian Jaquette's extra point makes the score seven to zip, and that would be all the Spartans would need on this night. But just for good measure, with 4.46 left in the first quarter, senior defensive back Gino Federico returns this sunny Riccio pass, 47 yards, Montour's first defensive score of the season as he gets in. The Spartan defense was on its game all night long. A tip pass by number 20, Joe Orlandini, breaks up a possible Wolverine touchdown. Beautiful anticipation right there. And later, Orlandini's interception, an excellent return in the half. Halts another Elwood City drive. And Joe O became Joe D on this night. This fourth quarter interception by number 32, Todd Police, and a 28-yard return leave the Spartans knocking on the door at the six-yard line of Elwood City. And the icing on the cake came when senior fullback Brandon Bertram picks up a loose ball on the fumble by Romano, and he says thank you very much. One-yard line, tips in for the end zone, and the score, Spartans' final score of the night. Steve Romano, once again, his second consecutive 100-yard game, 136 yards on 18 carries. The 21-0 victory leaves Montour with a 2-1 conference record and puts the Spartans over 500 for the first time in two years. Week four takes the Spartans to Dormont Stadium for a matchup with Parkway Conference newcomer Keystone Oaks. And the Spartans welcome the Golden Eagles to the Parkway on the game's third play. Terrence Thomas breaks the runoff left side behind the blocking of Justin Traurig, Chris Fakos, and Justin Bianco. 55 yards, the race is on. First Spartan score of the night. On their next possession, quarterback Brian DeCenzo, after some nifty play action here, completes a 27-yard pass to Tony Del Bianco. And that sets up another Thomas touchdown. This time from eight yards away, Thomas gets in his second touchdown of the game, third of the season. And Montour has its second score of this game. Senzo's then pass for a two-point conversion is good. Derek Barron makes the reception. Spartans have a 14-0 lead at the end of the first quarter. Montour wasted no time on their third possession. 41-yard Desenzo completion to Gino Federico. Sets up Brandon Bertram's three-yard touchdown. He goes in. They're on the board again. And Ian Jaquette's extra point makes the score 21-0. The route was on. With just 18 seconds left before the half, the Spartans reach deep into the playbook. And they come up with some razzle-dazzle. The halfback option pass, Bertram. 69-yard touchdown pass to senior wideout Alan Reichel behind excellent pass blocking by Bob Ramsey and Dan Rusin. The Spartans take a 28-0 lead to the locker room at halftime. In the second half, this pass reception by Derek Barron and his 44-yard scamper down the sidelines. Taking Eagle defenders with him. Look at him go. Sets up his one-yard touchdown. He goes in. Fake was so good, in fact, that it fooled all the camera. But trust me, Derek's in there for the score. The Spartans not only dominated on the scoreboard, they also dominated the stat sheet. They held KO to seven yards rushing and a total of 48 yards on offense. Welcome to the Parkway Conference. Montour now 3-1, and one, and they control their own destiny as far as playoff positioning is concerned. Final score, Montour 35, Keystone Oaks nothing. The Spartans return home in week five for a highly anticipated matchup with the resurgent Hopewell Vikings. The Vikings are 4-0 at this point and hold a very big key to the playoff hopes of the Spartans, but this was Montour's homecoming. The atmosphere was electric. Sunny 
Montour takes the opening kickoff, and they connect on a big play early in this game. And it's Terrence Thomas. Shows another of his many talents. Look at this. He passes the ball, and 52 yards later, the completion to number seven, Allen Reichel. The Spartans couldn't capitalize, however, and they turn the ball over on downs deep in Hopewell territory. Hopewell, though, is unable to move the ball as well. Nice defensive play here by the Spartans. Stop them, and they have to give the ball back to the Spartans at midfield. Brian DeCenzo's 29-yard completion to Gino Federico moves the ball to the Viking 23-yard line, and four plays later, double T. Terrence Thomas breaks off the right side for Montour's first touchdown of this big game. Hopewell still couldn't get stuff going. Look at the nice play here by Derek Barron. Trips up the quarterback. Hopewell had to punt back to the Spartans, and that's when DeCenzo went to work. 20-yard completion. Unbelievable athletic move by Joe Orlandini, maintaining his balance. Montour in business again at the Hopewell 16-yard line. Now the second play of the second quarter. It's DeCenzo. Tossing a touchdown pass to 81. Derek Barron. He gets in. Ian Jaquette's extra point gave the Spartans a 14-0 lead. Later in the quarter, another takeaway by the Spartan defense. Alan Reichel came up with his first interception of the season. And on the very next play, another big offensive maneuver by Terrence Thomas. He takes it, goes left side, 67 yards down the sidelines. The Vikings could only watch. Could they catch him? The answer was yes. Montour could not go any further. Defense was again the order of the day for the Spartans. Todd Police's third pickoff of the season. Dan Rusin and Dave Kromoski's strong defensive line play and Mark Williams' fifth sack of the season held Hopewell scoreless for three quarters. Midway through the fourth quarter, the Vikings were finally able to dent the Spartan defense, ending the consecutive scoreless streak at 12 quarters. But the Spartans came away with a very big win against a much improved Hopewell team, and they kept their playoff hopes alive. Final Montour 14, Hopewell 7.
Week six takes the Spartans for a ride down the Ohio River for a non-conference contest with double-A hopeful freedom. Both the Bulldogs and the Spartans ended the game with four and one records, and the Bulldogs showed why they would contend for a playoff spot in the Midwestern Conference when they marched 90 yards on the opening drive to take a 6-0 lead. But the Spartans countered with a drive of their own. It featured an eight-yard run by Terrence Thomas and a 13-yard run by Steve Romano. Both those runs set up a 13-yard touchdown pass from Brian DeCenzo to a wide-open Tony Del Bianco. The yeah, an excellent pass blocking by Justin Bianco, Chris Bacos, and Justin Traurig. The extra point was blocked, and midway through the second quarter, the score was tied at six apiece. Freedom was driving again, but this sack by Mark Williams, his sixth of the season, forced the dogs into a passing situation, and that's when number one, Gino Federico, answered with an interception at the goal line. Following the interception, the Spartan offense set up at its own 30 for what would be the game-winning drive. Big plays by Thomas. And an important third down conversion on this pass to Joe Orlandini moved Montour deep into Freedom Territory where Brandon Bertram then finished off the drive with a one-yard plunge over left tackle. The two-point conversion to Del Bianco put the Spartans up by eight and that would be all they needed. Final score, Montour 14, Freedom 6. following week, the Spartans ventured back to the Beaver Valley for a contest with Parkway Conference returnee, Ambridge. The Bridgers had dropped down from Quad A, but still found themselves struggling in a tough Parkway Conference. For the fourth time in seven games, Montour spots the opponent an early lead, but a 37-yard pickup on this reverse by Joe Orlandini. Moved the Spartans to the Ambridge 30-yard line. A couple of plays later, it's Terrence Thomas, a seven-yard touchdown run. That tied the game at seven. The Bridgers were unable to move the ball, and following a Brandon Bertram interception right here, his second of the season, the Spartans had excellent field position at the Ambridge 34. This 20-yard completion from Brian DeCenso to tight end Derek Barron moved the ball to the Ambridge 15-yard line. And three plays later, DeCenso calls his own number, the sneak. Montour ahead, 14-7. Following following intermission, it was all Montour. Thomas did his thing going off left side. And that set up the one-yard burst by fullback Brandon Bertram behind the blocking of Bob Ramsey and tackle Dan Roos and Montour ahead 21-14 after Ian Jaquette added the point after. Later in the third quarter, following an average punt and a 15-yard pickup here by Bertram. Those are big plays in a 69-yard drive, which is capped off with a Thomas one-yard score. Montour in control. With the Spartans ahead 27-14, Spartan defense took over again. Dave Kromowski forces the fumble. Thomas gets it. Spartans have the ball deep in average territory once again. And the Spartans took nearly five minutes off the clock to go 26 yards Derek Barron's end around, seven yard score, closed that drive off. It was a huge night for the Spartan running game, 319 yards, Thomas 134. The game ended 33-14 and saw the Spartans in the middle of a six game winning streak.
Week number eight brings the Spartans back to the hilltop to face their old nemesis, the Blackhawk Cougars. Again, Montour showed their generosity by spotting the Cougars an early seven-point lead following a Spartan turnover. But the Spartans showed signs of life early on. This 32-yard kickoff return by Derek Barron set up Montour at their own 42-yard line. Then it's a 34-yard completion from Brian Desenzo to wide receiver Alan Reichel. Moved the ball all the way down to the Blackhawks 17, but the drive stalled, and the Spartans were unable to convert a 33-yard field goal. You want defense? How about this? A bone-jarring tackle by the Spartans' defensive leader, Derek Barron, on Cougar fullback. Nick Shansky knocks the ball loose, and Dave Kromowski. Fumble recovery starts a series of turnovers. An interception by Blackhawks' Adam Lodovico gave the Cougars the ball at their own nine-yard line. But Blackhawk quarterback Dane Helsing returned the favor. Helsing's pass picked off by Orlandini. On the return, the ball came loose. Number seven, Alan Reichel, is at the right place at the right time, and he comes up with the recovery. The Spartans in business at the Blackhawk 21-yard line. Short games by Brian Bertram and Steve Romano move the ball. The Cougar 5 from where Terrence Thomas follows Derek Barrett's block and carries two Blackhawk defenders into the end zone. Ian Jaquette's extra point ties the game at 7 with just under 9 minutes left in the second quarter. Montour defense stopped Blackhawk two more times before they have on plays like this by freshman nose guard Joe Bianco. And a fumble recovery by number 79, Dan Rusin. They're not booing, they're ruing. And so the battle for the lead of the Parkway Conference goes to the locker room, deadlock at 7. Blackhawk took the second half kickoff and marched 54 yards to take a very short-lived 14-7 lead. That's when Todd Police, 25-yard return on the ensuing kickoff, put the ball at the Montour 40-yard line. And on the second play of the drive, the Spartans again go a little deeper into that playbook. It's Terrence Thomas again as a passer, completes a 40-yard halfback pass to Gino Federico, moving the ball all the way to the Cougar 18-yard line. Two plays later, sophomore quarterback Brian Desenzo bursts through a gaping hole on the right side taking the ball all the way down to the Blackhawk one-yard line. And the 60-yard, six-play drive is culminated with Brandon Bertram's one-yard touchdown. This game is tied at 14 apiece. But this is the number one ranked team in AAA, and the Cougars responded like the fine team they are. Bertram's 49-yard punt pinned Blackhawk at their own eight-yard line. But AAA Player of the Year, Trent Wisner, carried 15 times on that drive. It lasted 9 minutes, 3 seconds, and it covered 92 yards. Fittingly, Wisner scampers in from 14 yards, and it all but snuffed out. The Spartans hope for a seventh consecutive win. 21-14, they're up. Desperation pass from Desenzo to Paul Schooneman. Picked off by the Cougars, Dane Helsing, putting the final nail in the Spartans' coffin. Trent Wisner breaks one for 49 yards, but junior quarterback Evan Welsh catches him from behind to save any further damage. Blackhawk earned a very big conference win and remain undefeated, but the Spartans show the Cougars that they are back and a team to be reckoned with in the future. Final, Blackhawk 21, Montour 14. With their playoff hopes still alive, the Spartans took the short trip to Moon Area to face the Tigers. The Spartans would also need some help to be assured of that playoff berth. Montour needed a West Allegheny victory over Hopewell, but the Spartans had their own work cut out for themselves. They were facing the number one ranked defense in the entire state of Pennsylvania, a defense that had allowed only 24 points in their previous eight games. The Spartans, to their credit, left everything they had on the field that night against the eventual AAA champions and state runner-up, but they couldn't penetrate that stubborn Moon defense. Two first-half touchdowns by the Tigers was the only scoring in the game. Moon shut down Montour 13 to nothing. The Spartans, though, did get the help they were looking for. A West A win assured Montour of that coveted trip to the playoffs. 
at the beginning of the season, we put together two main goals for ourselves. We wanted to uh, both have a winning season and we wanted to go to the playoffs, and we ultimately succeeded in both of those goals. And I feel that not only the playoff berth will help the lower classmen, you know, strive for something in the future, but uh, our winning season also helped keep the winning tradition at Montour alive. The Chartier's Valley game, where it gave our team my confidence that was our first true victory as a team, as seniors, that we could take with us and say that, you know what I mean, we can go on a roll from here and let's just do it. This year, my, I had an interception for uh, the Old City game, I returned 47 yards for a touchdown. That was, I like, that was my favorite play because I made like, a lot of moves to get in the end zone. Halfback pass, Brandon threw me against Keystone Oaks. Went like 69 yards. It's probably the biggest moment. I like the Hope Ball game because we knew that we had to win that to, to prove that Hope Ball wasn't that dominant this year. And it was our first major challenge besides West A that we got a victory with. We were playing Freedom F Freedom and uh, we were, uh, it was fourth down, they were punting. And I look over at the side and I hear Mr. Bar scream, watch the, the fake. So I'm sitting there, I, I took a step back off the line and uh, I seen the center snap it to one of the backs. He uh, rolled back to throw the ball. So I went flying up there and I smacked him. And uh, I knew he was sacked and everyone else knew he was sacked. But uh, I, I pulled him on top of me. And uh, right as I pulled him down, he threw the ball. And uh, our tackle, Dan Rusin, weighs about 250 pounds, uh, intercepted it and got a, ran it for about five yards. So that was probably the funniest play I ever saw. Blackhawk game was probably the best game. You know, it was 21-14. It was close all the way to like the end of the third, fourth quarter. Thought we could have pulled it out, but just didn't go our way. It was a hard-fought game all the way. Could have went either way. That's probably the best memory of all all the games. The Valley game, because seeing everybody go away and seeing how much football really meant to everybody at the high school, everything, seeing everybody just letting it all out and showing how much they love football. I want everyone to remember how hard we worked this year, and you have to work even harder to get even farther, especially with the teams we have to play. Good luck to them and everything they do next year. Work as hard as they can. You'll miss it. You gotta just work hard. They've been there. They've seen what happened. Just work as hard as you can, cause pretty soon you know it's the end of your season. Just to work hard and uh, stay in the weight room, and they'll make it back to the playoffs next year. They got enough talent. Just that it goes fast and enjoy it, and work as hard as you can to do your best, cause before you know it, it'll be over. Lift weights. Start lifting weights and getting everybody involved. That'd be the best thing for them, so they can keep it going. Keep the tradition alive. It's a great school to play for. I mean, give it your hardest. Play with the heart. You'll become successful with everything. After a brief one-year hiatus, the Montour Spartans back where they belong in the postseason. The Spartans cross the bridge into Death Valley, a physically hampered team for a first-round matchup with the Valley Vikings, the second-place team from the Greater Allegheny Conference. The opportunistic Spartans came up with a big turnover early with the Vikings driving an Aaron pitch recovered by Mark Williams at the 40-yard line, a 14-yard gain then by Terrence Thomas, and a 15-yard scamper for a first down by Todd Police here on the fake punt, moved the ball all the way down to the Valley 12-yard line. But the offense could go no further, and they left it up to Ian Jaquette, who nailed a 26-yard field goal. His first of the season, Montour had a 3-0 lead. With the Vikings on the move again, this Dom Girardi completion to Mike Martin is knocked loose by linebacker Derek Barron and recovered by Matt Nozel at the Spartan 18-yard line. And Montour wasted no time in making them pay. On the very next play, Terrence Thomas, a member of the PG's fabulous 22 West, goes through the hole, and he outruns Valley defenders 82 yards for the touchdown. The run was the longest game of the year for the Spartans. Sophomore offensive lineman Brian Ziskowski and Dan Smellis led the way. They were filling in for the injured Dan Rusin and Justin Schrarig. They got their first taste of Spartan success in a big way. 
With a 10-0 lead, the Montour defense began to assert itself. The Valley of the Spartan 14-yard line, defensive tackle Bob Ramsey strips Girardi of the ball, and number 53, Chris Fakos, makes the recovery. The two teams exchange turnovers, and with 8.21 left in the second quarter, linebacker Brandon Bertram steps in front of a Girardi pass. And look at this. He rambles 85 yards for the Spartan touchdown. Nobody's going to get him. Montour led 16 to nothing. The Vikings were shell shocked. The Spartan defense continued to play well. Mark Williams, his seventh sack of the season. And that forced Valley to put the ball in the air. Great pass coverage here by Todd Police and Evan Welsh on a fourth down. Stalls yet another Viking drive. But with 43 seconds left in the half, a key play for this one. Valley star running back Andre Burke breaks a punt return for 82 yards. The long return made the score 16 to 6 and it shifted all the momentum in the Vikings' favor at halftime. The Spartans would put up a valiant effort in the second half, but the Vikings' high-octane arsenal of running backs and untimely Montour injuries at some key positions would be too much for the black and gold to overcome. Valley would go on to win the game 26-16, eliminating the Spartans from the playoff picture. Montour's visit to the playoffs was brief, but their return was the fulfillment of one of the goals the team set way back in August during training camp. This bitter defeat at the hands of the Vikings may mean more than we know in setting the stage for some great things to come. The season came to an abrupt end that chilly night in Death Valley, but what did not end that night and will last forever are the memories of a great season. A season of accomplishment. A return to the playoffs, a spot always reserved for Montour. A 6-4 record, a major improvement over the previous season. A six-game winning streak, the longest in three years. And 12 consecutive scoreless quarters by the defense, an outstanding achievement in the always difficult Parkway Conference. But after the statistics are forgotten and the big plays are embellished through the years, what will remain is far more important. New friendships that are shaped and old friendships that are strengthened. The strong feeling of commitment to a cause, to which Coach Don Morgan often refers, and the bonds that are formed in the locker room on the practice field and on game day that are as strong as any form in a young man's life. The 16 seniors, indeed this entire team, can be proud of their accomplishments, but they can be most proud of the fact that their achievements came through hard work with an exemplary display of sportsmanship. Although we say goodbye to these seniors, they leave behind a renewed set of standards and goals for future Spartans to emulate. We wish these seniors the very best in all they aspire to in life and we thank them, the underclassmen and the coaches and staff, for a thrilling 98 season.